The success of Luxembourg as a financial centre has been very closely linked to the European USITS Directive of 1985 for the marketing of investment funds. But the jurisdiction is very far from just being a one-trick pony. More recently, the AIFMD European Directive for the regulation of investment funds has also played a crucial part in the development of Luxembourg as a financial centre. Firms such as Arrington Metternach, based here in Luxembourg's Kennedy Avenue, have built their reputations as legal firms in the interpretation of these regulations. We're here to meet their partners, Claude Niedner and Gilles Dussemont, to talk about this changing regulatory landscape. Luxembourg was actually a jurisdiction which was innovative in terms of uh, setting up structures where we had, for instance, multiple compartments, multiple sub-funds, which other jurisdictions did not allow. We had multiple share classes, which were not permitted in other jurisdictions. Today, things have changed slightly, because we are in an environment of convergence from a regulatory perspective at European level. And therefore, the position of Luxembourg, although still hugely successful, I think is based on other success factors. It is no longer sort of the situation that Luxembourg would perhaps be more innovative in terms of permitting things, which are actually not permitted in other jurisdictions. But I think these days it's actually the recognition of Luxembourg as a uh, pan-European or even global fund distribution centre. It is the presence in Luxembourg of many service providers, where we speak about uh, depositories, central administration agents, auditors, legal professionals. Um, and also the uh, supervision by the Luxembourg uh, Financial uh, Sector Supervision Commission, which I think also plays an important role in that respect. And these combinations, or these factors today make Luxembourg still a very successful place for setting up your usage funds. Do you feel that the AIFMD, the Directive for Alternative Investments, can that potentially be just as successful for Luxembourg as the usage directive. Look, we're, we're now three years into operation and actually um, moving fast. And uh, we can confirm today, first of all, that the directive works. Um, it's like every change. At the, at the start, you oppose change because things were running kind of smoothly. But we can confirm today that they're running much better. We have a framework that we can work with and what the stakeholders today, what they need is legal certainty. This directive is providing legal certainty. It allows managers to either set up in Europe and then embrace the European market as a whole, or even to operate from outside. And once you understand what the objectives are and how you can use it, then slowly but steadily um, the actors in, in the market are using it. And, and we're clearly there today. Now, Luxembourg has, specifically speaking about real estate, already been quite well positioned for uh, real estate funds, but the AIFMD does add an international dimension. So today, asset managers are more likely to set up a fund where investors come from many jurisdictions and where the fund is also investing into different European jurisdictions. And that is the case what Luxembourg offers, and very certainly, to compare sort of real estate to equity or fixed income, investors are also looking for alternative opportunities in order to generate return. And as specialist lawyers, what kind of other regulatory innovations would you like to see available in the Luxembourg toolbox? Well, there are two components, I believe. The first component is what can we do in Luxembourg? And the second component is what happens at the European level? If we think about Luxembourg, very clearly the Reserve Deterrent Investment Fund uh, has been sort of the right initiative at the right point in time because it, um, it is using sort of this general approach of the Alternative Investment Fund Managers Directive to actually have manager supervised funds. 
So the manager is subject to supervision and as a result of that manager supervision, the fund is indirectly supervised. In terms of speed to market, in terms of cost in order to set up the funds, this is a very, very attractive uh, component. And let me speak about the second component, the European component. Sometimes sort of there is a trend towards over-regulation at the European level. Authorities should think about investment funds, which could also be sold to sophisticated individuals and not limit them to sort of these long-term investment funds, which are subject to uh, restrictions which are too strict in terms of what they can do in terms of leverage, that is something where European initiative would be extremely welcome. They need to sort of add more flexibility and also enabling sophisticated individual investors to invest not only in fixed income and equities, but also going to real estate, to going to private equity, going to infrastructure. Over-regulation makes it simply difficult to work. So we need to strike the right balance between the two, but at the end of the day, legal certainty will always be the most important.